Welcome to this episode of On The Go. I'm Phoenix City Councilwoman Kate Gallego. With the holidays approaching, we're focusing today's show on some organizations that are helping people in need. We're going to hear from a local organization at the heart of efforts to prevent and end homelessness in the Valley. We'll also visit with Maricopa County Supervisor-elect Steve Gallardo to discuss his goals for his first term. First, we're gonna learn about Victory Place, an exciting project in Phoenix that provides both affordable housing and vital social services to military veterans. With us today to talk about Victory Place is Carl, who manages it. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Kate. It's an honor to be here with you. Wonderful. Yeah. I'm very honored to have Victory Place in District 8. Thank you for being in my, a great part of my community. Thank Can you. you tell us about the project? Yeah, thank you for supporting us, too. We've gotten a lot of great support from the city as, as well as the state. And uh, it's uh, something that we need uh, to make this uh, all work. Uh, Victory Place uh, was started about 2001 as a uh, transitional housing and a few permanent housing beds for veterans. We house uh, U.S. Vets Inc. on, on our property, uh, which is the nonprofit that uh, brings in homeless veterans uh, and uh, gets them uh, on the track, uh, stabilized, and on, on the road to uh, uh, permanent living, uh, self-sufficiency uh, by finding them work and, and, uh, and other avenues, giving them training and uh, classes and things like that. We are on the permanent side of it. We also maintain their building and take care of them, uh, health and safety issues, whatever they need. And uh, then we also have permanent housing on site where the people can transition into uh, so that uh, there is a place for them to go. They, uh, we have a kitchen, a uh, big dining room that takes care of the transitional housing people, as well as any of the veterans that uh, are there that want to uh, partake of the dining room. Uh, uh, Victory Place Cafe uh, is run by uh, the uh, Bethesda Community Baptist Church, right kind of next door. We've partnered with them in the beginning with this property because they own the property that we are now on and uh, so we, part of uh, part of this agreement has been that they wanted to be a help in uh, solving this uh, homeless issues as well and so they are uh, running the uh, cafe and uh, just do a great job at, uh, at feeding the guys they never turn anybody away uh, they uh, they do a wonderful wonderful job and it's a small community uh, the church is pretty small but they they do a big big thing they they do uh, a, a lot of hard work and uh, and a lot of good things with uh, a little revenue really a little source uh, of uh, revenue so uh, uh, they've done a they've done a great job <clears throat> can people who are watching us here today stop by Victory Place Cafe sure sure meals are real reasonable uh, and they're very good they've got a great chef in there and uh, th their hours are not all day, obviously, they, they, they serve mostly uh, breakfast uh, from, um, I think they start at uh, 6 to six to 7.30, and then lunch is from 11.30 to 1, and then dinner uh, from 5, uh, uh, 4.30 to 6. Um, and they're uh, uh, 2, 3, and $5 or $6 for dinner. Uh, and you get, you get plenty of food, and it's good. Uh, they, uh, everything pretty much from scratch, they, they, do a, they do a wonderful job. So yes, people are encouraged to stop in and we'll give them a tour of the facility if they'd like. Uh, we usually have an empty room, we're pretty full now, but we usually have an empty room we can show them and see what the, uh, the new uh, buildings, uh, and especially the new building that is gonna be going up here that you we were just at the groundbreaking for the other day. Uh, and it'll be very similar to what we have uh, just built a few years ago. It was wonderful to be part of the groundbreaking. Congratulations. Yeah, it's thank you very much. Really it's building exciting. out the yeah. campus. Yes, that will be our uh, that will be our last building on this property, except for an area up front that we uh, are have ticketed to have a clinic on. Unfortunately, the tax credits that we got for this uh, for phase four are uh, can't really be used uh, for uh, anything but housing. So uh, we are looking for uh, someone that would 
step up a foundation or something like that that could help us uh, uh, construct this clinic for the guy, for the guys, and there's women too as well. Um, we'll have a, over 200 people on campus once this other building is up, uh, and so it would be a, a real benefit to them to have something close where they don't have to get, make their way down to the VA and stuff like that. So. And I'd certainly love to see a VA presence in South Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would be good because there's a lot of uh, veterans in South Phoenix that uh, uh, don't live at our site, that are self-supporting and sustaining, uh, that could avail themselves of that. So it would be uh, it would be very good to have something down there. Yeah, I noticed the. I think I read in the paper that there was one opening in Scottsdale and stuff, and, and that's great. But we'd like to have something in South Phoenix as well. Well, if any millionaires are watching us now or people with foundations, they yes, can. Yes, absolutely. Donate. Phoenix, Phoenix Suns, the Diamondbacks, people like that, the Cardinals that would want to step up. Uh, or like you said, somebody, you know, there's lots of foundations out there. Somebody. It wouldn't be a very expensive building. It would be, uh, you know, a, a far short of a million dollars probably would, would put up a very nice facility there. We already own the land, so uh, that wouldn't be an issue. And uh, it's already laid out the city uh, uh, planning and zoning commission would not have any issues with it so it's already as the uh, president i think likes to say uh, shovel ready pretty much so we we could be ready to go pretty quick if somebody stepped up with that excellent it's an exciting time for the campus yes it is it really is uh, a lot of activity there they're moving a lot of dirt this morning when i was there uh, and having to compact it all down and, and stuff so uh, got the big, big uh, tractors and things there, so it was a, it was a lot of fun to see that house that was kind of an eyesore get knocked down. And that was uh, that, that already improved the neighborhood just <laughs> just doing that. So uh, we try to be good neighbors too, but we have people that uh, uh, neighbors across the street and people like that 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 encourage the veterans and help in, in, a, in a way too, and our veterans help them too. So it's kind of fun see the interaction. How did you get involved with this work? Oh, wow. Um, well, I, I was in the Navy. I graduated uh, from ASU with a Bachelor of Science in Business and uh, went in the Navy, got drafted, joined the Navy. I was a uh, Naval Security Group uh, Chinese linguist and was in Japan and, and uh, did a lot of TAD service and stuff. Came back started a business after a couple of years and uh, bought three franchises uh, in Surf Pro and ran those for a number of years. Um, my wife and I, my wife passed away. My, uh, uh, the, the lady that I'm married to now, her husband had uh, died. We met at church and uh, we were both uh, kind of tired of what we were doing. She was in corporate America, I was doing this. And so we, uh, just got rid of everything and uh, started looking for uh, for something else to do. She got involved in homelessness before me and actually was the, re the responsible for me getting into it uh, as a property manager. They were looking for somebody and she knew I could fix things and do things and, and uh, could handle uh, people and had a heart for, for helping. So she, uh, we, I brought in Brad Bridwell, uh, who was the site director at the time, hired me and uh, whose place I'm sitting in right now. He should, he should be here, but he's in New Orleans at a conference and sends his best, by the way. He's, he's, a, tr he's a tremendous guy. And uh, he is now with uh, Cloud Break Communities as well as the uh, kind of a developer for them, for sites around, the, around uh, additional sites around the country that we, we now run several and, and uh, we're looking, looking for more. Um, but uh, so I got, taken on to kind of part-time at first to do that and then it worked into a full-time position and now it's uh, more than a full-time <laughs> position but uh, with the with the addition of the other properties but uh, we're working on solving that too I'm I'm in fact if somebody is watching this and is looking for a uh, a maintenance position or something like that uh, please send in our your resume or come down to 850 East Jones and hand it in and look around and see what what the guys are like and what you'd be into if you, if we brought you on. So we are looking for somebody. Wonderful. Well, thank you for your service to our country and your continued service to veterans. We are 
lucky to have you and Victory oh, Place. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I feel blessed to uh, be a part of the, uh, a great organization and uh, helping U.S. vets do their job as well. So it's been a, it's been a blessing to us. Thank you for joining us here today. Thank you very much for having me. Please stay with us. We'll be right back for more On The Go. Sergeant Michelle Garcia served meritoriously in Iraq and has the medals to prove it. Soon after leaving the Navy, Lieutenant Chris Scott found a job, a home, and started a family of his own. Corpsman Richard Stokely took the skills he learned in Vietnam and put them to good use as a paramedic. But soon after leaving the military, each of these veterans fell on hard times and faced homelessness. Even after Michelle lost all her savings, even after Chris wasn't able to pay his mortgage, and even after Richard battled alcoholism for years, they each reached out for help when they needed it most. A simple phone call put them in touch with a trained professional from the Department of Veterans Affairs. That call got Michelle a place to stay until she could afford one of her own, put Chris in touch with employment assistance, and found Richard a substance abuse program. These veterans are success stories, not only for how they were able to help others while serving their country, but for how they were able to let others help them. If you know of or are a veteran in need, make the call. District 8 had a big stake in this fall's election as voters chose a new representative for downtown and South Phoenix on the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. I'm honored to have with us today Maricopa County Supervisor-elect Steve Gallardo. Supervisor Gallardo, congratulations on your election and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about what a supervisor does. Okay, yeah, great. Uh, the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors uh, oversees vital services for, for Maricopa County, uh, everywhere from uh, health and human services, transportation, our jails, the court system. Uh, it oversees many, many uh, various uh, parts uh, of services for, for Maricopa County citizens. Um, it, it acts as not only a fiscal agent, uh, with many of the constitutional offices, like the county attorney, the sheriff's office, um, but it does oversee uh, some day-to-day -day services, uh, particularly in those areas that aren't perhaps maybe uh, in the city of Phoenix, that are outside what we call county islands. Many of them throughout the city of Phoenix uh, that Maricopa County uh, is in charge of overseeing. So I look forward to it. It's gonna be a great challenge. Uh, I'm getting around right now, meeting with so many folks right now and understanding the needs of our community and what, uh, what partnerships that the city of Phoenix and the county can do. So I'm looking forward to it, but uh, it provides a, a great amount of services to the citizens and uh, it's gonna be a great time. Well, I'm really looking forward to working with you. We have county islands in the middle of my city council mm -hmm. district and hopefully we can work together so that people don't have to know where the boundary ends and where it begins. And, and most folks, and, and, and uh, most folks uh, perhaps don't even know that they're residing in a county island. They may think, well, you know, this is all part of the city of Phoenix when it's actually not. But it is so important because, you know, there's the, the need on one side or the other is, is, is something that uh, I think we all want to address. And I think working together from a county and a city perspective, I think it's awesome. A lot of challenges out there, but I look forward to working with the city of Phoenix in your office and taking care of these challenges. Wonderful. Yeah, there'll be streets where part of the street is in the county and part of the street is in the city. Or Exactly. We're in the middle right now of creating a, an actual citizens committee, an advisory committee. I want to be able to get experts in all these different areas. Let it be health and human services, transportation, the courts, the jails, and let's start talking about the need. What, what is it that we can do better uh, as a county moves forward? What can we do to make sure we provide the services to the people of Maricopa County? And what areas can we work together from a city and county perspective? There's so much uh, partnerships that we can, we can collaborate on. So I'm really looking forward to it. We are looking forward to working with you. One issue you just mentioned was homelessness. And that's an issue we both are passionate about addressing. And there's been a lot of progress, but a lot of work Still most, do. most most folks don't realize that I served 12 years on a school board, and uh, I've dealt with so many families and so many children that come from 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 homeless families, and and I know that there is so much need out there. The city has done a great job in trying to and moving forward in, in addressing some of those needs, and and I believe the county uh, should take the exact same road. Let's do what. Let's start looking at what we can do to prevent homelessness. What can we do? To, to help those families that are struggling right now, perhaps in a homeless type situation, what can we do to bring them in 
to, to the office and start providing services, let's put them into a home. What can we do to address some of their needs? And I'm looking forward to uh, focusing on the homeless situation. Let's start looking at what we can do, not only from a city level, but school district level. Let's partner up with some of these school districts to address homelessness in many of these school districts. Because uh, you have kids right now going to our, to our schools right now that uh, are moving from location to location because they're having a hard time finding a home. Yep, it's there. This economy really is affecting so many families. And that's, that's what you're finding out, you know, as, as the city and the state starts to slowly come out of this terrible recession, many of these families are still suffering. Uh, they're still struggling every day, not only to find a job, but just to provide uh, the basic needs for their family. So I think that's something that we got to keep in mind as, as, as Maricopa County moves forward, as we, as we start addressing some of the needs. Uh, what are we doing to help these families that are struggling every day, trying to provide food on the table, to provide a shelter for their families? So many families are struggling every day right now, and we need to keep that in mind. And how do we help these families that are struggling? How do we make sure that they uh, have the basic needs right now to survive and, and provide for their families? So it's a, it's, a, it's a huge issue. Absolutely. What are some of the other issues that are at the top of your to-do list? You know, you, you look at one of the biggest expenses to Maricopa County. It's the criminal justice system. That's the biggest expense right now in Maricopa County. So I, I would love to be able to put together an advisory group to look and how we can manage our criminal justice system better. How can we better serve not only the taxpayers, uh, but the, the folks that are engaged in the criminal justice system right now? What can we do to reduce the number of folks that are involved or getting engaged in, in, the, in the criminal justice side? What, what can we do to get folks from, from getting out of or getting into trouble, make sure they stay out of trouble? What do we do to make sure the system flows cr correctly and flows uh, uh, good. So, so there's so much we can do from, from, from a criminal justice side that I really want to focus in on. Let's make sure we have a system that is top grade. This is one of the largest counties in the country. And we, we, I think we owe it to the taxpayers of, of Maricopa County and the city of Phoenix to make sure we provide great services, particularly on the criminal justice side. So that's one of the areas I really want to focus on over the next four years. That's wonderful. Councilman Nowakowski and I co-chair a task force to deal with graffiti related issues and prevention is always at the top of our list, which is one of the strategies that you just mentioned. If we could just get kids better things to do with their time than out there on the graffiti side and divert them from the system to begin with, it seems like. I've, I've always been a strong advocate of prevention and intervention. What are we doing to, to help kids not get into trouble? What are we doing to make sure that they're uh, doing stuff that's uh, productive and, and staying out of trouble. And unfortunately, when, when you have kids that, uh, that perhaps uh, you know, don't have much to do and, and are looking to, to keep busy, they, they tend to sometimes get themselves in trouble and graffiti you know, is usually right there with it. So uh, I, I commend uh, the city of Phoenix on their graffiti uh, buster program. I think it's been a great asset to the city of Phoenix. I'd love to duplicate it in Maricopa County and make sure that we uh, get graffiti taken care of in those county islands, as, as, as you mentioned. So, uh, so much can be done in Maricopa County. I look forward to working with the city of Phoenix and making sure we, we team up on issues like graffiti and, and uh, youth programs. I think, I think that's something that uh, definitely the county and city should be working together on. Wonderful. Well, we're really looking forward to working with you. Thank you, Thank you. for joining us today. Coming up next, we're going to hear more about two local organizations at the heart of efforts to prevent and end homelessness in the Valley. Please stay with us for more On The Go. I was in Fort Benning, Fort Hood, Fort Bliss. The best part of my career in the military was when I first made NCO, non-commissioned officer, when I made my E5. I was really to a point where I said, this is not me. You know, I'm over 50 years old. I've always worked all my life, paid my taxes. You know, I feel so lost. I got here, I was treated so well. If you see the community that we have here, we look out for each other, we care for each other. People actually do care. If you served your country, remember, the doors are there. Just knock and it'll open.
Welcome back to On The Go. I'm Councilwoman Kate Gallego. Joining me now is Joan Service, Executive Director of the Arizona Coalition to End Homelessness. Joan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about the coalition? So the Arizona Coalition to End Homelessness is a statewide organization working to end homelessness through advocacy, education, and coordination with local communities like Phoenix to prevent and end homelessness through education, public awareness, and coordinating special events throughout the valley and throughout the state to really bring about um, awareness on the root causes of homelessness and how the general public can work to um, end homelessness. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you for all your work in the area. We both share an interest in ending veterans homelessness. Mine comes from just personal experience after my husband got back from Iraq and a lot of the men with whom he served didn't have a place to go and ended up facing some difficult issues because of that. But we have some success to share in that area. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. The Arizona Coalition to End Homelessness was, uh, is pleased to be the coordinating agency that kicked off Project H3 Vets. And Project H3 Vets was the local initiative um, as part of the, uh, a national movement called the 100,000 Homes Campaign. Our local initiative, Project H3 Vets, and just a little bit about H3, um, it stands for Home, Health, and Hope because the concept is, is that you provide somebody a home, they can start addressing their health and have a hope for the future. But this initiative, this special project that we kicked off was um, working to end uh, veteran homelessness, to ad address and end veteran homelessness. And we kicked that off in November of 2011. And to, to date, we have housed over 250 uh, chronically homeless veterans. Um, thus propelling us to be one of, uh, the, one of, one of two communities to make the claim of, end, of, of ending or creating a functional end to chronic veteran homelessness. Doesn't mean that we won't ever um, see people who are veterans um, experiencing homelessness. It just means that we now have enough community resources to bear to, to address their and end, end their homelessness. So, so there should never be, veterans should never get to that chronic or um, have, who have experienced homelessness for over a year. They should never get to that level. Wonderful. One of the uh, great single days in, in fighting that particular problem is Stand Down. Can you tell us about your involvement with that and what's coming up? Yes, so the Arizona Coalition to End Homelessness also coordinates um, the Maricopa County Stand Down, which is held February, uh, for 2015, it'll be held February 12th through the 14th at the Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Phoenix. And that's a um, great outreach opportunity. We invite um, homeless and at-risk veterans to come to the Veterans Memorial Coliseum oh, to receive services and um, to basically uh, take the steps to end their hom homelessness right there on the, at, the, at the event. Um, last year, we served over 1,700 uh, homeless and at-risk veterans, and we, we stand ready to serve that many more this, this next year in 2015. We, um, we know it's a great opportunity to um, collect information about how many uh, folks are experiencing homelessness, how many veterans are experiencing homelessness in our community. We work with other communities throughout Arizona, um, Tucson, Prescott, other communities that run similar events and we coordinate all their activities so that we can, again, have a really excellent data source of how many folks are experiencing homelessness in our state and how we can work as a community to end their homelessness. Wonderful. Well, I will save the date. Easy to remember, especially since it ends on Valentine's Day and Statehood Day. But there's other dates coming up. We are in the holiday season right now. Can you tell us about some of the things that uh, we can do in J November and December? Absolutely. We have activities um, that, that anybody um, throughout the state can do in November, December, and even January. So um, the last, uh, the week before Thanksgiving, uh, nationally, we celebrate National Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week, and the Arizona Coalition to End Homelessness is launching our public awareness campaign of Will Work to End Homelessness, and we are asking uh, folks to change their Facebook profile to basically allow this to be an opportunity to educate their friends and family about what they can do throughout the year, not just this one week, but throughout the year to end homelessness. Additionally, December 21st, which is the longest winter night, we have Homeless Memorial Day, which is an opportunity to bring about awareness about 
how um, individuals who are living on the streets who are not connected to resources and shelters, what we as a community can do to work to end their homelessness and connect them to services so that they, could, they would never experience any kind of tragedy on the streets. We know that um, we don't necessarily work, deal with so much with cold winter nights, we, but we do, as, as you know, the city of Phoenix is very res responsive to heat relief efforts. We know that during the summertime, living out in the elements can be very, very tragic and dangerous. So that night is a great opportunity for us to, again, recommit our efforts to ending homelessness. And then the Arizona Coalition to End Homelessness was, is pl now pleased to be a working poor tax uh, credit organization. So as folks think about their year end giving, we'd ask them to consider um, our organization to support our efforts. And then finally, at, um, nationally, we uh, as a community uh, work to identify how many folks are experiencing homelessness on the streets and in the shelters throughout, the, um, throughout um, Maricopa and throughout the state. And so we conduct what's called a point in time street count. And so we're asking for volunteers to connect with our organization, to connect with our website, and so we can recruit volunteers to help us um, in assisting with that uh, demographic um, uh, opportunity to, to connect with fo folks who are living on the streets. Wonderful. I learned the hard way for that one. Even though it is Dar Arizona, you do have to wear warm clothes if you're out at night and yes. made that mistake once. We'll never make it again. <laughs> yes. For indoor volunteer opportunities, um, tell us what, what you're doing with delivering meals to veterans around the holiday season. Through our Project H3 Vets initiative, we have again housed over 250 uh, veterans. They're now in the comfort of their safe, uh, comfort of their home, and we want to make sure that they don't return to the shelters and don't return to some of their old habits and old stomping grounds. We want them to be successful in housing. So we bring meals to them to help them understand that there is a, a community of, of, of supporters and believers that are there to wrap their, their love and care around them. So on, on Thanksgiving Day and um, right before the holidays, we'll be delivering Thanksgiving uh, turkey dinners as well as Christmas gifts, uh, holiday gifts to uh, let them know that there's a community of support um, wanting to let them know uh, that they, they can be successful in housing and we're, we're there to support them one, every step of the way. It's wonderful. They've worked so hard for our country, and it's great that we're creating these success stories. You know, from my personal experience, knowing one man with, who served with my husband, and he was sleeping sometimes on our couch, but moving back and forth and really not doing well. And then once he had permanent supportive housing, it was like a whole different person, didn't have as many mental health issues, even without medication. Just that stable environment can make such a difference. And in his case, it was just something that spiraled out of control, in part because a relationship had ended while he was overseas and not having that safe place to go when he got back in a time when you really are in transition was very, very difficult. So it's great that Phoenix is leading the way in this particular issue. I understand right now we're ranked number two in the country as the number two city for veterans homelessness. The mayor has said that's not good enough. We want to be number one, and we're pleased to have you as a partner as we do that. Thank you. Yes, thank you. The, the city has always been very uh, committed partners with us through many different ways, through heat relief, through uh, faith, um, faith in, in engaging with faith communities and with our stand down and our veteran um, activities. We just, we thank, thank you, Councilwoman and, and the whole uh, city council for your efforts. Wonderful and it's exciting. Thank you for telling us all the volunteer opportunities as well. There's great ways to get involved or donate if, if time is more precious and you do have a little bit of money on the tax credit, which is actually at really no cost because of the structure. It's wonderful. That's all the time we have for this month's episode of On The Go. If you have any questions or comments about our show, please call my office at 602-262-7493 or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district eight. We'll see you next time On The Go.